If there's one thing we've learned about Newt Gingrich, it is that he likes to dabble in big ideas. But now it seems that planet Earth, well, it's just not big enough. While making a stop in Florida last night, home to NASA's Cape Canaveral, Newt may have presented one of his biggest ideas to date, a space colony on the moon completed by 2020, the end, of course, of his two-term presidency. We will have the first permanent base on the moon, and it will be American. This is not the first time we've heard Mr. Gingrich visiting outer space on the campaign trail. Here he is over the summer where he had this to say about NASA during a debate. If you take all the money we've spent at NASA since we landed on the moon and you applied that money for incentives to the private sector, we would today probably have a permanent station on the moon, three or four permanent stations in space, a new generation of, of, of lift vehicles, and instead, what we've had is bureaucracy after bureaucracy after bureaucracy and failure after failure. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but I have to think that if Newt wants to get to the moon by 2020, well, he'd better start fueling his rockets now. For more on this, I'm joined by Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist at the American Museum of Natural History and the author of the upcoming book, Space Chronicles, the very book. I have it in my hand, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, Newt says that by the time, of course, of his second presidency, because he's easily going to be re-elected, he'll have a station on the moon by 2020. Is that possible? Well, he, he admitted that it's an ambitious goal. And <laughs> I don't have a problem with ambitious goals. The naysayers out there are not the engineers. They're people who deeply understand the political system and recognize that certain ambitions might not be possible given a particular climate. So he's going to have to change the nation's understanding and valuation of what it is to embark on those kind of adventures. But, Dr. Tyson, given the fact that Newt Gingrich wants to destroy government intervention, government bodies, government agencies, is the private sector really ever going to fund a a station on the moon? There's an imbalance here. In his speech, he recognized the value of entrepreneurship in the landmarks of the birth of aviation. All right, and also prize money to stimulate uh, people working out of their garage to advance a very important, what became a very important industry. Sure, he then went on to say that Kennedy's speech launched us to the moon. Well, of course, the entire Apollo project was a government-funded project. You can't trash government in one sense and then praise it in another without then mentioning that it was the government. It was a government project, NASA, that got us to the moon. So the problem is not simply government. It's how well designed is your government agency to accomplish the goal and the task that you've set forth. But we've heard people like Richard Branson talking up the possibility of space su shuttle trips for ordinary members of the public. I'll tell Nothing's you this, happened. Th this book, Space Chronicles, the original title of that book yes. was Failure to Launch, The Dreams and Delusions of Space Enthusiasts. Right. Then the publisher said, no, that's too depressing. You can't have that. <laughs> there's, there's rampant delusion out there about what the future will hold for us. One of the problems is, the expectation is that private sector will just advance a space frontier. No, they're not going to advance the space frontier because the frontier of space is expensive, it's dangerous, with unknown risks and unknown costs. That is not ripe for a capital markets to value, okay? The history of human exploration is one where governments take the first step. They pay for the first patents. They draw the maps. Governments paid for, the government paid for Columbus's voyage and Magellan's voyage and Lewis and Clark. That's who figures out what's going on out there. Then private enterprise comes in afterwards. Not according to Newt Gingrich, though. No, he got it wrong. Is what is my point? He he, he doesn't he, he he now. So in his plan, by the way, private sector is a part is a participant with NASA on that frontier. I think that can work. I, I don't you have do. a problem with that. That's right. It, and by the way, private sector is already a participant. With yes, NASA, no, but not at the level that no he's imagining. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We know that he was speaking in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that may have colored somewhat? A little bit. And, you know, it's, it's a political race. I mean, would it have the same impact in Idaho? Right, right. Yeah. If you can easy, if Connecticut? It's easy to give Albuquerque. A, a speech on space at space Co in Space Coast, Florida, right there in Brevard County, very proud county, engineers, scientists, moon launches right out of that county. It's, yes. 
But yes, it, the, in the end, for any of this to work, that speech has to work in Idaho. It's got to work in, 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 in Vermont, where there aren't NASA bases and NASA centers, because at the end of the day, it's taxpayer money from the whole country that would afford such a trip. And I'm saying what he didn't say in his speech, and I don't know if he's thinking about it, you can't just go to the moon and Mars because you feel like it, or because you have a couple of entrepreneurs. There's got to be a mission statement that can justify it. And for me, it can easily be justified if you recognize that NASA itself is a force of nature on the hearts and minds of a nation. Just a final a, a question. Force, it sends everybody to and want to become scientists and engineers. I get that, and I get the, and the importance. Economies. Absolutely, and I get that, and it's a powerful force in any community, well, time, as it was in the 1960s. You want a time? Just the, oh, I have to just... D Dr. Tyson, I'm sorry, that is a rocket. The just, back, just, back when, back when th there's a, a country long ago and far away that went to the moon in this. Yes, indeed. I, absolutely. <laughs> a final question. I guess a lot of our viewers will be thinking, look, I've got a property that's underwater. I can't afford the mortgage. I'm about to be foreclosed on. I've lost my job. Why is this man talking about building a space station on the moon? Do we need this? That, without further justification, that's a completely understandable concern. But I submit to you, yes. from coming from another direction, and it's all detailed in there, of coming from another direction, is if the nation dreams big, and that that percolates its way through society, those dreams are enabled by by, by prowess in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and the it, STEM fields. And once everybody gets that feeling through them, they want to become scientists and engineers and participate in this adventure. And as scientists and engineers who are the seeds of tomorrow's economies in this competitive 21st century that we're entering. So I submit to you, yeah, I want to go to the moon and Mars to explore, but that's not even the biggest reason to do so. The biggest reason to do so is we're, we are receding while the rest of the world goes by because they understand the value of such investments. Indeed. I'm screaming but, at you. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You <laughs> not at all. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, thank you very much for joining us.